insolence is back in the viewfinder, I'm going to do something drastic, something I don't want to be doing, but doing nothing at all is going to make this orchid not survive beyond the next four or five months. In trying to avoid her complete demise, I am going to be unpotting her because she's got all the hallmarks of going downhill very, very fast. And well, I have one root that I cannot really hydrate under these circumstances because it's very close to the stem. So I'm going to be taking a few measures here today. I'm going to follow the guidelines of Daniel's Orchid Ranch once again in the hopes that I can get insolence to make it, pull through, maybe grow us a side shoot or a keiki on one of the remaining spikes. Seeing as her terminal spike is exactly that, it's terminal. The orchid is doomed if I don't do anything and she is doomed if she doesn't grow a spike. She could just be doomed anyway, regardless of what I do, but doing nothing, oh dear, then she's definitely doomed because this is not looking good at all. I have been bringing insolence out and having her in bright light on the blooming alley south facing side of the patio every time the temperatures were agreeable. At least something. So thank you for being here. I appreciate that you decided to click on the video. Nothing in this video is going to be guaranteed but I did say I would document the journey, my attempt at trying to revive, save and hopefully keep the lifespan of this orchid going indefinitely. Thank you for your support. This is not a nice video for me to do. My conditions are not conducive right now for Phalaenopsis orchids to be doing anything of substance. The ones that I have that are established, they are doing well because they are established despite the adverse conditions. This one being new, is not liking any of it and well she is super super weak she's got the floppy leaves and everything first thing I want to do though before I take her out of the pot is consolidate all the spikes with one support so I don't have all these things poking around and I apologize for any background noise that I cannot edit out so let's see I suppose I don't have to do this all right now because we're going to be unpotting her and I will be trying to do what Daniel's Orchid Ranch has been so successful in doing and try to revive this orchid through semi-water culture. As in, give her lots of water one day all the way to the stem and then let her dry out until she's dried out and then repeat. It's laborious, it's time consuming, it's not a guarantee. Not for my conditions anyway. I don't use supplemental lights, I don't use heat mats and my grow space is not heated. But we have to do this. So instead of consolidating them all in one go, we'll have to wait and see. I would like to get these spikes out of my eyes <laughs> sooner rather than later because <laughs> They are really, really dangerous. I'm a bit of a klutz and they are very dangerous for me to be poking my eyes out. Sometimes I'm not very coordinated. So we'll have a look at her roots now. If you haven't seen the other video, I will link that in the description and you can see there's, there's nothing in the pot. But this root hydrates really well. The unfortunate thing is it's coming right out from the stem and the rest is literally Dead. I don't want to make a mess on the patio, but there's nothing in here. I've been touching the top roots every once in a while. They're all papery. So let me go over my catch bucket here. Oh, it's bad. Shame, shame, shame. Now, Daniel's Orchid Ranch has revived orchids like this successfully, and what she does is she doesn't cut the roots off at the stem. She literally just pulls off all the dead and rotting belayment. She also says that sometimes the steely inside is still viable and can still be of some help in at least drawing water, if not, in, if not much, at least some. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to follow what she does and pull off all the rotting and dead belayment, which is pretty much on every single root bar the one that's coming out the top there. Mm -hmm. 
And while I do this, please like the video. <laughs> Whether it's successful or it's going to be an epic fail, I would appreciate it if you like the video because, you know, some people will have a similar situation. They will see all the success stories on the internet. And if they want to follow the journey of insolence, the only way that they can find the video is if it comes up in the algorithm. Because if I fail in getting her revived, I want other people not to feel discouraged that they also not, you know, they can't revive their phalaenopsis, even though we see so many success stories. So I would so appreciate a like, also a share if it helps somebody to feel better about themselves that they can't get it right either. I have never been successful when I see this on any of my fouls in the past. It would be a first. And I do believe that in the past, I was also dedicated to actually doing exactly what Danielle's Orchid Ranch was doing. I used to follow her step by step. And yet I wasn't successful. And basically, I boil that down to the fact that I am not using lights, heat mats, or any heat at this point in time in the season that we find ourselves in, which is bang smack in the middle of winter. I said I wouldn't touch this orchid until she showed me signs of root growth, but you can see that <sighs> it's not gonna help if I don't touch her at all. I've got to do something and not just watch her get more and more floppy. I want her to be able to at least get hydration through that one root. And at least this way we can now also assess whether she had the stem rot because of the little bit concerning, sorry about that, yellowing of the leaf when I removed the top layer of media that was in the pot. It doesn't look like stem rot to me. I was also very concerned I'd find a lot of muck around the stem here which would necessitate more spraying with plain water just to clean it up, but I don't see any muck either. Normally I would have to spray this down, but given the fact that we are in the conditions we are in, I can't risk making, you know, getting that stem wet. So this is, for lack of a better term, good news, I don't have to spray her down. Everything down here is firm. This is the route I'm targeting. Because when this root hydrates right here on the dead part, the rest greens up. I can't get her hydrated via this little stump. Let's see what we're going to do next. Let me clean up. Just a little close up to see if we see anything happening. <laughs> but I doubt it. So every time the temperatures are warm, she has a warm pocket of diffused sunlight on the blooming alley. I bring her and Romeo's Nuva out every day, whenever it's possible. There's no pests, that's good. All right, now, the simple thing, next step. <laughs> I have the smallest of jars, because there's no need to be going overkill on this one. Pun, word, not intended at all. I'm going to put the dead roots well the steely which hopefully has something in there let's turn her around because we are focusing after all on this root and then the question is how to keep her stable in here i'm gonna have to always prop her up against a wall it's the only way and then another thing i normally do not do at all is a lot of seaweed a lot of growth hormones going in I normally advise against that because if you don't have the right conditions, the right light, etc., then growth hormones will probably cause some form of confusion within the orchid. I have no choice but to somehow try to stimulate this orchid to do something. So there's a lot of seaweed in here. I have about 200 parts per million of seaweed. You can see how concentrated it is. And I have 100 parts per million of CalMag. Seeing as this root is only going to hydrate quite slowly, I can't go too high on the nutrients because there's really not that much for the orchid to take up. And as per the recommendation of Daniel's Orchid Ranch, 
I make sure that the base is touching the water for the next 24 hours and then I will drain this glass and then I put her back in, let her dry and do it again and so on and so forth. So it's been about an hour and it takes that long for the dried velamen down there to wick up enough water to start greening up this one viable root here. And what I did in the meantime as well is just dip my finger into the seaweed and CalMag solution to moisten that little stump there. But again, there is no guarantee that what I'm doing is going to work. Definitely not. Doing nothing is not going to work either. So at least hopefully, hopefully we come out of this moving into April, May when the temperatures will be more conducive. And then hopefully I'm thinking we'll have lost probably four leaves. And I'm just going to predict that these leaves down here will become even more leathery, seeing as they're already showing all the hallmarks of that. So these four leaves are going to go, not because I'm going to take them, but they're going to be absorbed by the orchid. If all goes well, that would be the best case scenario. These are going to be super leathery, and then we'll have to wait and see what she does next. You can hear it in my voice. I am apprehensive, and I am in fear of losing this orchid. But here we are. Hopefully something will help out, something will work. From now on, soaking in this solution for 24 hours. I will drain her, let everything dry. That's not too difficult. There's not much there that's going to be wet. Then after 24 hours of being dry, I will soak her again. Not in seaweed and CalMag, that is overkill. I will probably just do CalMag again at 100 parts per million. And I'm going to do that in a continuous cycle for as long as it takes to see what happens next. I hope that you are going to be with me for this journey. Massive, massive crossings of fingers. This was a gift from my daughter. And yeah, that's why I'm going to attempt this again and hopefully follow Daniel's Orchid Ranch's instructions to a T and get her through and be able to say this is my first time I am successful at reviving a terminal orchid. Thank you so much for watching. Your support is appreciated. Of course, if you have any questions, any suggestions, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to take them on board as and when I can, if I can. Have yourselves a beautiful day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.